seats have been crushed in the front there. There's three or four rows just completely torn apart, and they've just unscrewed them and hauled them out of the building. And so now they're like your first it's five rows are gone. I am. Li we have loads of men now all around the stage. Okay. I'm telling you one thing just so you're not thrown by it. I have left it up to the young guys, the guards, the black ones, the white ones, all of them, to use their own discretion. So don't be concerned if you see men on the stage. They have better leverage, some of them, okay. by crouching on the sides okay. to push the kids when they attack. Okay. Okay. That it's actually better. So don't worry. If you see men on the stage, they're not audience. They're your guards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And loads of about 40. Okay. So what you're saying is nobody will uh, will get on the stage. Uh, I have said that I have officially I cannot, requested you I to again. just leave. I will walk on. I've I stated can't. this. Because but the point is, I've just been out there checking with the young men really myself madness. all around. And they're all on to it. Uh, some of the boys who were there for the first show, there's many more. Some of them showed me their sleeves are torn off, their arms are scratched. I know. I said that your show. I said that your. I said at one point that your shoulder is badly wrenched, incidentally, mm -hmm. by that one kid that wouldn't let go. Yeah, right. That your shoulder is pulled, or that your costume was damaged. But but more importantly, you're working with a torn shoulder now. Yeah. I tell you, it's just an unbelievable situation. I, I've never been confronted with it before, and I. I I really uh, think it's bad for me and bad for all of them. Going to, they were, you were right. Uh, uh, they were starting. They were going to start hosing them. Uh, well, they've destroyed a limousine. Uh, there's rioting out front, Elliot. Oh my God. Oh. Uh, physical rioting, uh, uh, beating up the guards. The kids are going mad. Oh, you can't. No, they're going mad, and they're not on anything. They're just. Uh, they're on you. <laughs> superintendent of St. John Hammond. I see. Have, have there been many uh, injuries? Uh, well, not injuries, but uh, many have been uh, hysterical, and uh, a lot through the crowding and crushing, they've been frightened, and well, that's just reduced them to collapse. So the primary problem has just been hysteria medically? That's right. <laughs> And what's it been like for you in terms of a working reporter? It's been good because there have been good stories on um, on both days. Yesterday we had fans jumping in the swimming pool at the hotel in a ploy to get into the hotel to see him. They hoped that they, the hotel management would take pity on them and let them dry themselves out inside. It made us a nice story. <laughs> Just give me some idea of, of uh, the kind of security problems you come across in a concert of this kind. What kind of provisions have you made? Well, here at Bellevue, Manchester, the security problems are handled by the security staff at Bellevue. The police, the civil police in this, this case, uh, have no jurisdiction over the security of Bellevue or of David Cassidy or any of his party. The security arrangements are made by his party and by the Bellevue authorities. Uh, the police step in uh, when there is large crowds, as there is today, really to look after the uh, health and perhaps to prevent bodily injury to uh, some of the younger children, because some of the children coming here today are, um, oh, some of them are only 10 years of age. And of course, uh, they are very vulnerable to getting injured. So we step in really to prevent the situation getting out of control. Can I ask you please again, girls, 
Will you please stay in your seats, okay? All stay in your seats over here. All stay. Okay, you can see me right now. How's that? Soon enough? Due to your uh, having the problem arriving here late, I have been unable to communicate with you properly about this internet, uh, the independent news uh, Look, uh, they're blowing the show for me, so I It's all over now. All right, uh, but it is. They almost ruined it. You know, I mean, I've had experience with it before. I didn't think they were going to come up on stage and shoot during the show. That, you know, that's ruining the show. It doesn't. The kids don't mind it. It was two minutes, and oh, we're getting something that minutes. can mean a fortune to us with Look, our day. Look, it was more than two minutes. They were up on stage. It's stuff that we're getting that we can't. That's for I'm free. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, just but what I'm asking is this: uh, they're blowing their ten o'clock because they blew the whistle on you for their two-minute interview that they need for the ten o'clock news, or I don't get the film. So in other words, they pressured you in a situation. They didn't pressure me. I you pressure, volunteered. You're pressuring me. <laughs> I got to do it, otherwise it's not on. Is that the case? No. Uh, That's not the case. Uh, it's not the case. We don't get the film. It's invaluable film for us to have for this thing I'm trying to put together with Walker. I just, you know, I really hate being pressured into a situation like that. I really. Here I am. I'm. I'm it's you wouldn't have been pressured, honey, except that you got here late and I didn't have I time to that. tell you. So I have to. It's only because I, cause you were, because you unfortunately got here a little late. I'm Banana just trying to it. fight through to get uh, some film which really can mean a lot to us as I'm piecing this goddamn why are we not? Why don't we get it in, in London where it's going to be really, I mean, that was incredible. Because that'll be different to here. This will be a different flavor, this little one compared to London. We're going to have it there too. I think you're wrong. Um, I think you're wrong only as much as we're not 200 miles away. And it's, it's a different atmosphere completely. Wembley is like, this is, this is like a Pittsburgh concert compared to Wembley. The contrast will be very interesting. I think you're wrong, but I will do it. I think you are. I well, it's going to take two minutes more just because. Uh, well, I look terrible now. I mean, I've just completely blown out. I mean, my eyes are swollen and stuff. I, you want, I don't want to see myself on television like that. I'm a mess. You know, it's like, really. Um. You know, it really bothers me that newspaper guy's trying to hold me from going on stage and the crowd's out there rioting, practically, you know. used to ask me and I used to kind of back off, you know, do you feel you're being exploited? I mean, my God, <laughs> of course I'm being exploited. <laughs> what is it? I mean, it's the classic example of it. Um, every f aspect of my life has been, you know, pursued. It's been, you know, driven into to every man. You know, I don't. I don't talk with them really anymore, only mm. because, I, A, I cannot read them. Yeah. I cannot read them because I eat my guts out about it. I would eat my guts out about reading things that are, are painting a picture of me that is false. was becoming something that I didn't want to be. I mean, I I hated the label that suddenly everybody saw me as um, a plastic face that mm. never s does anything but smile and lick lollipops and, you know, say his prayers. And uh, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm like everybody else, you know, uh, and I've, I've always said that. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a very awkward situation to be in, you know. You have to be able to pull down the, the curtain and say, this is work and this is personal. But suddenly the curtain is transparent and it's all see-through. I mean, you know, you can't close the windows. You know, you can't, you can't close the shades. I mean, there is no place you can go that's private, you know.
No. Tom, David and Big Jim. Big Jim. We're waiting in the limousine at the moment. David's footsteps from behind us. The front door opens. The car engine starts and we move forward. Don't stop for anything. Just go. Free and clear. <laughs> Driving at about 55 miles per hour straight out the front gate. Just about 40 or 50 people in front. And it's out. Go. You have a blanket? Yep. Yeah, it's on the back seat. <laughs> How are you feeling? Ah, uh, yeah. Just enough to wet my whistle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They do. I mean, they really cool. Yeah, they do. They do. They just get the, you know, it's such a, it's such a release from them. They get so emotionally, know. you know, built up about it, and they just, you know. I hung out a little in the hysteria like the ward. Yeah, my ears yeah. are ringing, ringing now, like. It hurt. It hurt it at too. times. It was, so it was so loud. I know. I couldn't control. I had, I had the, I had the amp up full blast. The Marshall up full blast. My guitar up full blast. I could barely hear it. Really. I know. I had to stand next to the. Thing. <laughs> Let's have a playing on the long notes. My guitar. Where are we going out to? Elliot and I are going to have a little steak, relax for about an hour, maybe 45 minutes. Yeah. Then we'd like to go to this, uh, is this private disco? Pool? It's a private, nobody but nobody can get in there. Nobody. <laughs> it's going to be empty. Empty, you and I are. No, 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 when I say that, you know, uh, it is yeah, very, right. very exclusive, very. What do you have available right now? Well, the steaks, if you like. How many are you? It'll be for two people. We would like to have, s what kind of steaks do you have? Well, uh, what do you like? Rum steak, filet steak, uh, uh, two fillets, medium rare, please. Medium rare, yes. Ask him if they have uh, fried potatoes with it, yeah, fried yeah. onions. Uh, yes, uh, I, I, we'd like to have mushrooms, potatoes, and onions. Mushrooms, potatoes, and onions, fine. And uh, do you have any uh, salads? Yes, two big salads. Two big salads, yes. And uh, the dressing uh, uh, will be? Uh, for me, Roquefort is the thing. Roquefort on one and oil and vinegar on the other. And um, uh, could, let me just think if there's just anything set else. Set up some bottled water, also some mineral water. Do you have any mineral water, bottled mineral water? Uh, yes, the room service will uh, fix that for you. Yes. They will. Fine. And what kind of vegetables do you have? Uh, uh, fennel. We have uh, beans, peas, fresh asparagus. Uh, the peas will be fine. Two portions of peas. Yeah. And if you'd be so, uh, and this is room what, two or four. Two, no, no, yeah. room two o four. And if you'd be so good now as to transfer me to the bar. <laughs> After bar. Yes, I'd like to order a bottle of Courvoisier. Uh, I'm afraid we just have Martel's uh, miniature bottle. Martel will be fine. Two bottles, please. Two Oh, uh, when when you say miniature bottles, how small is that? Uh, they're a double. Oh, in that case, let's have um, six bottles. Six. <laughs> Room, is it 204? 204, please. Yes. Uh, any glasses? Uh, yes, uh, two glasses, please. Um, do, would you want any ice? Yes, some ice, please. And a bottle. Could we have a bottle of mineral water? Yes, sir. Here we go. In the grip of Cassidy Mania. 
latest pop idol of young fans, American singer David Cassidy, tonight wound up a hectic two-day tour of the city. Martin Lewis reports. The theory that several thousand people just can't get through three swing doors all at the same time is not one that is easily explained to a Cassidy fan. Previous concerts by this latest of pop idols have left a trail of strained limbs and tonsils, and tonight's was no exception. Meanwhile, 22-year-old multi-millionaire David Cassidy has slipped in by another entrance to avoid the crush. Bodyguards keep him from too close contact with what one might loosely call his bread and butter. While he went through presents and telegrams from adoring fans, anonymous voices on a backstage phone kept pleading hopelessly to speak to David. Boy's good looks, helped not a little by a powerful publicity machine, have planted Cassidy firmly on the Beatle trail. Ever had a feeling that you've seen it all before? I started uh, working at Universal. I got my first job on an Ironsides television show. And from there I got uh, a Survivors about three months later, which carried me over. And I was going from check to check, you know, never knowing. <laughs> And uh, I moved out when I was uh, just just 19 with a friend of mine. We got a place uh, in Laurel Canyon about uh, 100 yards from your place. Yes, and no need to spin it down any more specifically. <laughs> than, than Gosh, no, so we don't want to. You were the noisiest neighbor I ever had. Oh. You, no, no, no. You were, oh. you, were, you were good in the beginning. It was nice and quiet in the neighborhood. But until I, until I got my electric guitar. And, and when word got out and those ramblers used to come around on Friday night with oh, yeah. flash bulbs, uh, mm, <laughs> old neighborhood started jumping. Yeah, it did, it did yeah. get a little heavy. You know, a little rough. Hanging around on my balcony when I got home. When they started taking trees as souvenirs. Like. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it became a little ridiculous. It was ridiculous. time for you to move on. At any rate, I did a number of dramatic television shows, uh, acting. Uh, Marcus Welby, uh, Bonanza, Medical Center, mm -hmm. just a number of Mod Squad. Uh, in one year, in one season, FBI, uh, I became, I was really lucky that I, they happened to come mm -hmm. along so quickly for me. Uh, and I did a pilot for a television series which was called, at that time, Family Business. And it was Screen Gems television show. Family Business. It was called The Family Business or something to that effect. And uh, I did a screen test for it. And right before I did the screen test, the day before they wanted to test, I didn't know they wanted to test me. It got down to two people. They said, listen, we're considering using your stepmother. Would you mind? How do you feel about working with her? I said, well, you know, she's a great friend of mine. I said, we're... um." You know, I said, we're very, very, very close uh, in that. So I don't see her too often, but, I mean, it's very warm and nice. And they said, fine. So I tested, and uh, a month later I found out I got the part. And uh, two months later I found out the time slot. Um, six months later I had a record that was released and sold uh, close to five million copies. I think I like it. Right. Five million copies? Five million copies, almost. Well, it's very close to it, yeah. Almost five million it's copies. Extraordinary. Yeah, it was, it was the... Uh, Your first single. First single, yeah. It was the biggest record, uh, single record uh, of the year. As a matter of fact, the second s biggest selling single record was uh, Let It Be. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to use three cars tonight because of porters, and we're going to use a small saloon, a very small saloon car for David. We've got the limousine and the car we used last night. It will be two decoys cars tonight because they might be looking for the Jaguar, which they've seen today already. Oh, what, but, so there's a white Jaguar. There's a white guy, Jaguar. A and black. A black uh, Daimler limousine. And which is like, it looks like a Bentley. Like a Rolls, yeah. Like, like a Rolls limousine. Right. And the third is a white Vauxhall Viva or something. It's a four right. door, small four door saloon. And when we get to the hall, It'll be the similar procedure as last night. Well, now, how, how are we going to leave the hotel? We're going to go... Uh, We're going to go through the kitchen. Through the kitchen entrance. Uh, into the white saloon. The other two cars, uh, with the security and everything, will go out to the front door uh, for the press and fans. And uh, once they see us leave past the kitchen, once they see the white uh, mini cab or the white small car leave, they will then just pull away from the hotel. They will then overtake us. The three of us will then go in convoy to the Beauty Park where they recognize the cars. We've already set up. We go through a, a back entrance. We go straight through uh, about a quarter of a mile avenue through the park into the rear of the hall. Uh, one, the black limousine will go for the stage door. The white Jaguar will go past as though he's going into the other side exit. 
The third car, which with Davian, will hang back uh, around five or six seconds so the fans, everyone, will clear away from the door we are going to use and get to the other two cars, and then we will go straight in. Uh, they've got two spy holes on the door. As soon as they see us coming, it's roller shutter door, it whips open, we're in, the door shut in seconds. How many security men are involved in the whole operation? Um, there's 50 at the hall. There are six um, or five personally with David here in Manchester, in London. There'll be eight around him, you know, for the immediate percent, you know, the immediate area around him. So the first record sold uh, the five million copies, but there, there must have been a moment prior to the sale. I mean, did you pretty much think yes. when you got the role <clears> for the TV show that that would do it for you? Do you know that everybody, um, see, from these television shows that I had done, they were receiving uh, an awful lot of fan mail. The guest shots. Yes, from the guest shots. And uh, the f after my first one was on, one week, every one of those fan teen magazines had contacted me and said listen we've got some sh this reaction we mm. want to mm. we want to run pictures of you and so forth and so on so i said well all right i said i don't care i said i had two or three shots of myself that were taken as an actor and i sent them over to them and they all printed them up and by that time it, they were printed two more of my shows were on Mm. and I was getting calls every hour on the hour. Mm. We're swamped, blah, blah, blah. We need photo sessions, you know. And um, it all was a big loon. I had never even read one of those fan magazines before, you know, really, seriously. I think I'd seen them in a grocery store when I was, you know, um, 14, and, uh, you know, watched the Beatles and the Rolling Stones have their little conflicts. Five against four isn't fair. <laughs> those kind of things, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know this, but I never—I mean—took them seriously. So, yeah. I um. I was a bit taken aback by it. You know, I mean, I—I I didn't know what to, to say. I mean, I was flattered, and um. When they saw the series, when the people of the magazine industry kind of mm. got together and saw the series, found out it was going to be sold, immediately they all came to me and said, "Listen, you know, you are going to be the next Elvis Presley of our day." and built me up and told me that and they went in and they made all these things they they all predicted it and they all because of the mail they'd received before and uh they prepared me for the initial shock of when it happened mm. so this was on around um oh june or july which is when i uh june yeah uh, three months before the series was on the air i was like uh, uh, on the covers of every one of those. Did you believe it? I mean, when when they first came to you and said, you will be the next Presley, you will uh, receive that much attention, was your first reaction, yeah, I guess they're right, or... I laughed. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. Hello. I, I have to, as we say in the new country, lay something on you. Nothing serious. Don't panic. 
I made a little fast deal today. As you're getting uh, ready now, mm -hmm. I have ITN, independent newsreel here. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be on the 10 o'clock news, and we get the film for free, which is what I'm compiling, as you know, for our right. goodies. But does what, it, here is you're going to miss the lighting up. Mess the what? Lighting up. No, no, show. no, 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 no. There it got portable films. You'll see. Here's what I need from you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it'll be a gorgeous piece of film. They're taking for tonight or to now. Or it'll when? be on the ten o'clock news. Oh. And uh, what we'll Which do? Which means they have to do this show. They got to do the ten o'clock news. Show. But uh, that's all right. First show's full. Here's the thing. What I have to ask you right now is while you're making up and leave that sketch there so they can see it. They've got to come in and just photograph you for a minute, like before the show. Oh. They will cover you, following you with their with their uh, cameras. Going up on stage. On the stage, so they don't bother you anymore. Okay. Uh, and you shoot. Uh, they shoot you during. The, then I get two or three minutes of film of you during the show. Okay. Which I think uh, can be handy for okay. us. Okay. David. Yeah. Which costume you wearing? Uh, this one. It's new. No. How much was the the most amount of money that you ever turned down to do a concert? Because uh, you didn't want to do it. Thirty-five thousand dollars. sort of sneak quickly on and get back to the original camera position which is behind one of the amplifiers mm -hmm. so that we can look up I mean this number I'm a man I'm told is, mm -hmm. is uh, you know where he jumps and shows he jumps a lot jumps that's around a fourth a number that yeah. comes up pretty soon I think yeah. is it next next it's go. next right okay. go okay go ahead God bless God speak okay honey at its peak, when you were on the cover of the, every one of those uh, right. magazines for right. uh, well over a year or two, yeah. what was your average mail count? What is your I'd heard rate? that ABC were receiving, and now you have to understand there's subsidiary stations all yeah. over. Yeah. They had gave me, given me estimations from ten to 20,000 letters a week. Uh, what, I am a, what I rather think will happen, yes. uh, because I did have to state David's and my regret at the decision, is that uh, when the BBC resisted last time, many hundreds of young girls marched on the BBC. But I think it could happen even more seriously this time because there are so many more thousands fans now. And uh, sure. you know, in, in that frustration, I just hope they don't, you know, break anything. Sure, sure. Because they're so excited and frustrated because there are actually some 70,000 girls, we figure, who will be able to see David. And there's some millions throughout the United Kingdom who are counting on seeing him uh, on top of the pumps. So I rather think there'll be a rather hurt, sorry group of people. We just heard that he's been banned from a BBC TV program. Banned? Why is that? Because the head of light entertainment at BBC is scared that he'll tear the television centre apart, or rather his fans will. So that makes us a nice story too. Um, this next song I'm going to do, uh, I was going to do, uh, this week, uh, but apparently, uh, both of you and I have been, uh, banned from television, you know? and, uh, that ABC 
were receiving. And now you have to understand there's subsidiary stations all yeah. over. Yeah. They had gave me given me estimations from ten to twenty thousand letters a week. Uh, what I am, a, what I rather think will happen. Yes. Uh, because I did have to state David's and my regret at the decision is that uh, when the BBC resisted last time, many hundreds of young girls marched on the BBC. But I think it could happen even more seriously this time because there are so many more thousands fans now. And, uh, sure. you know, in, in that frustration, I just hope they don't, you know, break anything. Sure, sure. Because they're so excited and frustrated because there are actually some 70,000 girls, we figure, who will be able to see David, and there's some millions throughout the United Kingdom who are counting on seeing him uh, on top of the pumps. So I rather think there'll be a rather hurt, sorry group of people. We've just heard that he's been banned from a BBC TV programme. Banned? Why is that? Because the head of light entertainment at BBC is scared that he'll tear the television centre apart, or rather his fans will. So that makes us a nice story too. Um, this next song I'm going to do, uh, I was going to do uh, this week, uh, but apparently uh, both of you and I have been uh, banned from television. You know? And uh, they're not going to let me do it. But uh, I'm going to do it for you right now. This is uh, one of three songs of my new single. And I used to do Being out front, uh, in front of the auditorium, as I am now, you see a mass of literally thousands of girls, thousands of girls, from where I'm standing now, they have surrounded and are sitting on top of an ambulance, which is in the front of uh, King's Hall, Bellevue. We'll go into the center of the crowd. What about David Cassidy seems to, uh, to excite you? I don't know. Pardon me? It's nice. Is it just the music, or is it the way he looks? Same as well. I'm sorry? Same as well. What is it that you like the most about David? It's so natural, I think. Do you like him more than the Osmonds? I do, any day. Have you ladies been to the first concert tonight? What do you think of David? Oh, he's lovely. <laughs> what is it about David Cassidy that you love so much? Well, the uh, way, way he looks and the way he acts. Well, What's your favorite song by him? Um, I don't know. How can I be sure? Um, I am a clown. So. What was the nicest part of the show for you? Um, when we were waiting for him to come on. I liked it when um, he sang Rock Me Baby. Is there anything about him you don't like? No. No. What is it about David Cassidy that you like so much? Um, his looks, I like the way he sings and his, the way he dances. No. Do you like the music more than his looks, or is the looks more than the music? All of us. <laughs> Both together, I think. I, I like him first, but I like his music now. What is it like having David Cassidy come to a place like uh, Bellevue, Manchester? Like a miracle come true. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
If you were able to talk with them or communicate something to them, what would you like to say? What kind of conversation would you like to have with them? I just like to ask them what things they like, and I just like to spend the day with them. Personally, from the point, we don't make a lot of money because there's a million people doing it. If you had it on your own, it's like the like the Beatles and the Walker Brothers and the Rolling Stones. It brings me back to the olden days. I was working them in the olden days. But these are sort of, it's almost as big as them now. You know what I mean, with the kids. So you were selling posters for the Beatles and the Stones too during that era? Well, yeah, this was 64, 65, you know, it was very good in those days, you know. But, I mean, he must be on a par with them. Of course, he appeals to a younger sort of generation, you know what I mean? But still, what do you want, my love? Ten pence. Oh, I like one of them. What's that one? That's the 30. Oh, I like that one then. Wait a minute, I want to get eight. Ten pence, I'm sure you have. Two I think they just don't realise what they're doing. They're just completely out of control and uh, they're hysterical and they don't know what they're doing. For people to turn cars over in the car park and things like that, ridiculous. What kind of things does he talk about that, or that you've read about that you like especially? About his oh, about his fans. Yeah. I'm sorry. The way he likes his fans. fans in England. Or oh, the way he likes his fans. Yeah. If you had a chance to talk with him, what kinds of things would you like oh, to talk no, about? No. <laughs> Bring him here and I'll show you. <laughs> what would people uh, here in Manchester be doing if they weren't attending concerts? What What other things do you do in your spare time? Well, I don't come from Manchester. We come from Bol near Bolton, Blackrod near Bolton. Whereabouts is that? Oh, it's um, about, oh, I don't know. I don't know. From here. But, but you came all the way from there to here to see David? Yes. Was it worth it? Yeah. How old are you? Fifteen. Is there any other personality that has ever made you feel the way you feel towards David? Well, when I heard him talking on Radio Luxembourg, um, when uh, one of his fans, a little girl, she got badly burned and uh, she said all that mattered was the ticket to see David at Wembley and I think that was the best that I've heard. How much, how much film do you bring for a night shooting? Well, I always bring about... Uh, for tonight, no more than about six rolls because uh, I just don't need any more than that. I've shot so many performances now. But ordinarily, I bring about 60 rolls of film wherever I go. 60? Yeah. Black and white? Maybe? Both. 50-50. And what do you shoot with usually? Which camera? Nikons. Mm -hmm. Lots of Nikons. I have about six of them. And, uh, what will most of the photos be used for? For the book. Uh, the book will be out in about a month in London. You know what it'll be called yet? Um, just, you know, it's David Cassidy's tour, and that's the whole thing. It's how many, and how many photos will be in it? Any idea? Somewhere close to 60 to 80 photos. Mostly 80% black and white, 20% color, with a fold-out poster. The, we're working out a thing right now so that we can release it in Germany, mm -hmm. Japan maybe, in the United States, and England. Hmm.
my life, from Indiana to God knows Muskogee that I've played, I've never played anything so rotten as out there.